Moving on to the bibliography section, this is where you put in everything that's been written about your work. You can just cut and paste the review here, give it a title, put in the author, the publication, the page number, etc. If you have an image, let's say a scan of the article, you can put that in there. Or maybe it's a file that has the archive of the article. Put that in here as well. This way, you're never searching around for that review when you have to quote from it or send it in with an application. The calendar is a pretty self-explanatory calendar for you to keep track of due dates and important events. The contact section is where you're going to keep track of all of your contacts. It's very helpful for doing your own PR and marketing. As you can see, it's the standard information for each person. Again, the email link, uh, link works. You can choose to, to let yourself know whether this person needs to be emailed or not emailed. And we have all of these categories that you can assign to, to people in your contact list, letting you know who they are and how they relate to your practice. This can be very helpful for doing targeted mailings and targeted um, PR work. We also have a section for putting in a form letter. This is helpful if you find yourself sending out a similar or the same letter to the same person or institution periodically. This way you don't have to uh, run around finding that letter that's associated with that person. And we have a notes section where you can keep track of how you met this person and any other information that you might want to know about them. Again, you can keep an infinite number of people in your contact list and it's really, uh, really helpful when you need to perhaps send out a mailing list to a gallery or to an exhibition space. Um, it's, all of this is exportable into Excel. And it's very easy to do um, uh, mailing labels, envelopes, all of that. The exhibition section is for you to keep track of all of the exhibitions you've participated in. It's kind of like your resume, but it's broken down into all the really important information that pertains to each project. So this is where you put in the title of the show, the start eight a start date, end date, what type of show it was. All the contact information to the, for the gallery, plus any other inform important information that you may need to keep in mind as you go on with your exhibition. You can import work so you have a complete list of all of the works in that exhibition. And you can print an artwork checklist so that you've got a list of all of the works in that show. So when you deliver work to the gallery, they know everything that's going to be in the show. They have all of the titles, all the important uh, reference information for the work. We also built in a section for a budget. This is helpful if you're putting on the exhibition yourself or if you're getting reimbursed. There's a to-do list, a place for uh, listing the participants in the show, a place for listing special needs for the exhibition, a notes section, and we have a section for putting in installation requirements for work. This can be very helpful if you have complicated installations that you need to instruct the gallery on how to install. It's important to keep track of all of this information. It's easy to forget it if you don't have it located in one place. The grants and proposals section is where you can keep track of all of your grants and proposals. 
we walk you through how to fill out each one of these sections, which are pretty standard in every grant or proposal application. The Information Resources section is where you'll, fi you'll find lots of information about other organizations, nonprofits, institutions that help artists. These are all organizations that provide resources, residencies, exhibition opportunities, advice, um, you name it, to artists all around the world. and a lot of them have web addresses that are really easy to access. So, if you have a question and it's not answered in the GIST software, you might want to come here. And it's just a good idea to familiarize yourself with these organizations, because they're here to serve you. Our planning section is a place where you can fill in steps and priorities for your tasks and goals that you need to meet in the future. This can be really helpful if you have a complicated project and you need to break it down into manageable steps. Proposal tracking allows for you to keep track of when you sent out a proposal and when you heard back from the organization. This is so you don't duplicate the same proposal to the same organization. You can also keep track of when you've sent out the invoice, when you receive payments, and if there's any balance. The research notes section is where you can put in any and all information that you that is pertinent to your research um, for a project or for an artwork you're creating. All you have to do is when you search the web, for example, you can cut and paste information in here Assign keywords, again, everything is easy to search for using the Find button. You can say whether it's a quote or not, maybe put in the URL here. If there's an image that goes along with your research, you can put it in here. And like I said earlier, it archives everything. The resume section is where you're going to keep track of all of your resumes. Artists have different resumes for different um, opportunities that come up. There's teaching resumes, there's resumes for exhibitions, there's resumes for grants, there's resumes for tons of different um, situations. So here you can put all of those resumes in one place so they're all very easy to find. And the GIST survey is something that we've been built in that you can take every now and then to, get, to, to gauge how you're building your practice. We put this in here so you can have a barometer for success that's something that's outside of the market, something outside of just making money. Taking the GIST survey will help you see that you're building your skills as an artist. You're getting better at photographing and documenting your work. Your artist resume is getting better. Your statement's getting better. All of these things are very valuable skills that an artist needs to build as they build their practice. So we have this um, survey here so that you can take it and see that yes, you are um, building your skills and you're building your practice.